Welcome back everybody. This is part three of the migration from Google Workspace into Microsoft 365. This last part I'm doing is the Google Docs, uh, well the Google Drive basically, into Microsoft 365 is so I'm going to be converting that into OneDrive. So we've done the mail, mail migration already, that's all done, we're live, the uh, mail is delivering in there successfully as you saw in the last, uh, the last session. So now we've got to get this user's uh, OneDrive over. So this is what we do. We first of all, we'll go into the SharePoint admin center because, as you would know, the uh, everything that happens inside Microsoft 365 that's file related is driven out of SharePoint. So here we go into migration, and there's lots of options to migrate data into the Office 365 scenario, and one of them here is Google Workspace. So we hit here, get started, and here we go. So likewise on the mail migration, we need to connect it into the Google Workspace, which we do here, we hit connect. And uh, you can see here, we need to do this install and authorize. Now this is gonna send it out to a, uh, an external site. It, it, this, obviously we're logged in on the Google site as well. You've seen that in the last videos, I've kept that on there. But what we do need to do is do the admin install and hit continue on there. And that will allow the access um, into the Google Workspace by Microsoft 365. So we'll say, yes, we agree. And we continue, because obviously we're a super admin, we can do all of this. So there we go, where to find it, it's all good. Okay, so that's done. Now we need to jump back in here and do the uh, authorization. So the next step is next here, and it will then Ask us to authenticate, which we say sign into Google Workspace, which we do, and, and that will then connect. And you can see now, good, we're connected into Google Workspace with the uh, with the rights that we need. It's actually quite easy to do the whole thing, to be honest. Then you finish. Away we go. So in the migration console, you can see here the next is to assess the Google Drives. We'll say select add source path, which is down the bottom here, add source path. And we can do it a few ways. We can put in with a CSV file or look for new users and groups in Workspace. I'm gonna do this one here because we've only got a few users in there. Um, if you wanna control the migration a bit uh, better, we do the, the upload the CSV file. If you do the download the blank one, you'll see the information it's after. So, you know, let's just do that and, uh, and see what that looks like. Okay, bring that up. And look at that, it's pretty blank. It doesn't really tell us too much, to be honest. I wanted to point that out because that's always a bit humorous when you see source path and for reference only, it just gives you this. Uh, that really is not particularly helpful, to be honest. But let's just close that out, come back to this one. So if you do want to know what to put in there, the best one is to just look at this here, source path. And you can see from that, that it's telling you really what they need to be, which is for personal drives. Like this format and for shared drives obviously we're a source and destination but for the personal drives they're going to go like for like with the upn that's specified so that's all good but for this one we will do look for new users scan content and hit add and that should go ahead and bring shortly uh, anything that we uh, that it finds inside uh, the google drive site so as it starts its scanning process if we just go down a bit see a bit more content happening and look it's found our users in Google and you can see it's it wants to scan currently that is all queued so when we uh, so when it starts to do something uh, you'll see this start to uh, appear here we go it's progress it's actually doing it straight away look at that scan folders and files should give us some sizing and some uh, detail on how many files it's totally found Ready. So that's, uh, that's finished. I'm gonna do this one here and say, finish and close your toy, we don't need that. So that's really our main screen we're gonna get and check it out, it's found 15 gig, 2300 files, and you can see what it really looks like. That's obviously what, it's, uh, what it looks like in terms of the data age and the like, which is a handy little thing to have. But the key thing here is we are ready to migrate all of these. So what you do is you can, I'll oh, just select them all and take off this admin one here and we say copy to migrations. 
Now, once we do that and hit copy, they'll pop over into the next screen. If we go to migrations here, and you know what, we just need to look at this one here. You can see here tags, uh, the drive path, the destination path, these are all good to go. Migration status never run, obviously. And this really is, is what we need. So to kick off the migration, we can just click on individuals or we can hit everybody and we can say migrate. We can also put it on a schedule as well if you want to do that. Uh, but in this case, we're just going to say migrate. And we are doing like for like on the, you know, the source and destination. So that's uh, this is a pretty easy migration. And this is just a standard one I'm sharing you. So, I mean, there is obviously the option to do the mapping of identities. If you go in there, you can see uh, it's basically automatically set it from these two. Um, if we wanted to, um, let's do the auto map, we can do import users and groups. And we can obviously look at these mappings in a bit more detail. But for what we're doing here, the auto map is going to work great. So, um, oh, excuse me. Let me. Uh, Come back in there and go back to our migrations. There we go. Um, we don't need to. I mean, you can look at these if you want to see what they are. But essentially, we'll say finish there. And we're going to grab everybody. And we are going to migrate. There we go. And that will run. Now, what I'm going to do in the background is just run over to Carl here and have a look at the files in OneDrive. And what we should see. Is now, what I've always been impressed about, because this is basically a, um, a reincarnation of the Mover.io tool, because you'll notice if you do go into Mover.io now, you can't do a Google migration. Uh, they took it out. Um, you do it through this. And so really, it is the Mover.io back end putting these files in here. And what I always was very impressed with Mover was really how fast it was with everything. So if we see here, you can see here in progress. And at start time, we can really see what is going on. And this will just change on the fly as things start to go through. If I look at this here, it's already, it's already doing things. Now, don't worry if it says files failed here. That is completely normal. Don't worry about that at all. It means it needs to do them on the second and third pass, and it will pick those up again, and we'll put them through. It probably means they don't have directories made, and it will just go through and retry. And you can see already we've got... Uh, a success count going up there. So we'll, we'll revisit this shortly and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But for now, let's jump into uh, Carl. Yeah, look, there you go. See, there we've got these, uh, these directories. And uh, you can see, obviously, you can see some of my taste in music. Apologies for that. Um, but yeah, look at these here file size. You can see items starting to appear in here. So if we look at uh, one and you'll see, yeah, look at that. And uh, yeah, everything's starting to come in. So let's have a look back console. And we should start to see things happening. And like I said, I'm going to let that just run for a bit. You can see originally we had 62 failed. I said that's probably because it's found files and it hasn't got a place to put them yet, directories and things, and it will change and it will go down. You can see it's now down to 32. So. We're just going to let that run just for a minute, and you can see what's happening on there. We should see some other numbers there shift. It's going up, but you will see it change. And But what you can tell is that the whole thing is working very quickly in the background because it's already done 4.2 gig. We've only got 15 gig as part of this whole migration, so we should be done pretty quickly. But I want to see these numbers just move around, go up and down. There's nothing nothing quite like watching a dashboard when you're mid-migration, right? So you can see I'm obviously just pausing it and restarting it when I see numbers change. So, but you can see it went up and now it's gone back down to 35 and lower. So I'm going to wait now and just pause it until we get our full 15 or so gig done. And then we can see, uh, see what these failed files look like after that. So what we have now is we've got these, which look like they're pretty well done, but we've got one chap here who has zero. And let's go and see who that is. Yep, these are all completed. He's sitting in an error state, and it is Russell. 
Now, you may remember Russell was the, the guy that we had all created and everything was provisioned, and then we deleted him and put him back because I wanted to show you on the PowerShell command about how we can set the password when we create the user. Now, we did that after we'd done all the provisioning of the um, OneDrives. So, of course, Russell's OneDrive is not provisioned, and you can see that's why it's sitting in an error state. So we'll go back and check on that. Let's just jump back into the user panel here and have a look at Russell, and let's see his OneDrive. And say, so, yep, okay, well, that's not there. It's not provisioned. So we need to go and do that. Okay. And we jump back into that spreadsheet, and you can see here there's our, our command. Take that, which is quite simply this one here that we'll cut and paste into that PowerShell. Now, I want to show you something else because Russell was already provisioned previously, right? Now, obviously, when you create the OneDrive, it creates the SPS side and gives it a name, which is the Russell. Premium.com, but when you delete it or just delete the user, that still exists in the back end. It disconnects it and it still exists there. Now, what will happen is when we create a new one, it's going to provision a new site and give it number two or number three, which will link through for the user, no problem. But what it what the problem is is that the migration tool is looking for that particular UPN. It won't match the two or three or whatever, it's going to match the first one, which is then going to fail because it's not active. And you obviously have all kinds of trouble with that. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. So let's just jump into the PowerShell here and we will connect into the site, the URL, admin at sharepoint.com. And we'll go in and use the credential that's stored here. And get in now. What I'm going to do is, is do the get SPS site. Now, if you just run this on its own, you're going to get just the domain SharePoint sites. What you want to do is put the include personal site on the end, and then oh, apologies, you've got to put the true sorry on the end of that. Now, what you'll see from there is even though we we had deleted Russell and created him, it doesn't have a OneDrive connected. But check this out: there is a personal OneDrive for Russell under this name. In the system. So really what we need to do is before we provision his new OneDrive, we want to get rid of this one. Now we can do that by the same sort of command. We'll grab this because we don't have the name set up retyping it. And we type in remove SPO site and it will be The identity is going to be this guy Yeah. With that, it's going to say, do we want to remove it? And we say, yes, we do. Thank you very much. And it should be gone. So if we just go up a couple here, bam, and Russell is now gone. So what we'll do is we'll just leave that open there for a minute. We'll go back into uh, Russell, and we'll just confirm that he has no OneDrive, because we've obviously deleted him on the back end. So he doesn't, which is good. And we just go back to the PowerShell and we'll create the SPO site. So what we do quite easily, we'll just grab that command, just cut and paste it out of the Excel that we had and just drop it in here and away we go. So once again, that'll take um, a couple of minutes to occur. So we'll just pause for a second and come back. Okay, and if we look at panel again and just refresh that, We'll see. There he is. He's got his OneDrive back. Excellent. But what we want to do is just go back to the PowerShell once more and just have a look at this and see what it looks like. And you can see what we're looking for here, what we're checking for is that the name of the new created one is exactly what it should be. No numbers on it, no uh, abbreviations or anything strange on it. It is just Russell. Now that's obviously key to make that migration work. So let's go back to the other console which is back into here, and we'll click on him again, and we'll hit the migrate again, and pick that off, and see it occur. So currently queued, and I want to see data moving in for Russell. So that didn't take too long for Russell's data to come over. This is 3.27 gig, 15 gig total, completed, and no skipped and no failures. So if we run back into here, we can see all completed and all done. So that really concludes everything we need to do on the, uh, the OneDrive migration.
uh, everything's over. So that's it. Hope that was useful to everybody. Um, please, as normal, subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I will talk to you next time. Cheers.